beats pounded all around Frank as a quintet of high school girls stomp towards him and his brother. Then the girls stomp back, widowed left and right, and spun in a huge circle. The song ended with all the girls doing somersaults at the same time. So as you can see, said the lead singer as the music stopped, she isn't even out of breath. We don't even use a bass guitar in Abraham Lincoln. We are all about dance music. Frank was feeling way out of his comfort zone. Okay, thank you very much. Bye. He mumbled, grabbing a gaping jaw and pulling him out of the Bayport High School gym. Let's head back to the treehouse, he told his brother. We need to think this over. Friday had arrived and the boys were no closer to finding out what had happened to Lucy. They talked to the four other competing bands now. Judy Mirimoto, the lead singer of the Rockabies, a folk band made up entirely of moms, had talked with them yesterday and no one they'd spoken to seem like a believable thief. Worse still, the battle was taking place that night. Lucy was still missing and Dylan was kind of a mess. Okay, said Frank, picking up the marker as they looked at what they had written days ago on the whiteboard. Let's look at what we have. Who? What? Stole Dylan's bus. When? During Paul's party. Where? From Paul's yard. Why and how? It's the why and how we're stuck on, Frank pointed out. We thought it was someone from a rival band trying to keep Crash from winning, but we cannot find any ev evidence of that. And if someone stole it for a totally different reason... Like what? Joe asked. Frank struggled. We couldn't come up with an another reason that was the problem. They don't like Dylan, he asked. They hate music? Joe frowned. But it had to be someone at the birthday party, he said. And they all seemed like a huge crush fan, remember? The minute Dylan and his buddy started setting up, it was all anyone could talk about. Frank sighed. Joe was right, and he felt totally stunned. Joe, I hate to say it, he said, but I'm not sure we're going to find Lucy in time for the battle of the bands. Joe hung his head. I was just wondering the same thing. I think we better call Dylan, Frank said. Joe reluctantly got to his feet. I don't want to, he said, but I think you're right. We have to tell Dylan the truth. Frank put down the marker to gather the boys, slowly climbed down the ladder and ambled across the backyard to the house. They told Aunt Gertrude they needed to make a phone call, then settled down in their father's study to call Dylan. Frank dialed the number. Ring, ring. Wouldn't it be great if Dylan had found it by now? Joe said like it was in his closet the whole time and he just forgot to tell us. Frank gave his brother an, Are you kidding, Luke? That would mean we did all this investigating for nothing, he pointed out. Yeah, agreed Joe, looking dreamily out the window, but it would be mean he had Lucy back, and they could play at the battle tonight. Frank was thinking that over, a voice picked up, on the other end of the line. Hello? It was Paul. Hi, Paul, Frank said. It's Frank and Joe. Hardy. Listen, is your brother L Dylan around? We need to talk to him. There was silence for a moment. Um, gosh, Dylan isn't home. Paul finally said. But before Frank could think of what to say, Night, someone else picked up. Hello? Frank recognized the voice straight away. Hey, Dylan, he said. It's Frank and Joe Hardy. We need to talk to you about Lucy. Oh, okay. 
Dylan's voice sounded a little sad at the mention of his beloved Tita. Want to come over now? I'm not doing anything. He paused. I don't have much to do now that I can't play Lucy. Frank met Joe's eyes. Said he, Joe mouthed. Okay, said Frank. We'll hop on our bikes and be right over. See you soon, Dylan said and hung up.